Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this video, we're going to go through a quick tip in order to determine how many poles does your specific brushless motor have. Now this is going to be the ideal video if you have a motor such as this one where you got it used, maybe you bought it off of a website and now you're looking at it and there's zero information to tell you anything about this motor and where it comes from. So the big question is, how many poles does this motor have? We're going to go and take a look at that, but with one key specific interest for us. We don't want to go and take it apart and literally count the amount of magnets that we find on the rotor. We're going to do this completely electrically in order to avoid taking the motor apart. If you have access to the inside rotor of this motor, it's fairly simple to count the actual magnetic poles that exist on that rotor. We're not going to use that method. We're going to go and do this electrically. Now to do this electrically, all you need is a few very simple tools. You're going to need to have a multimeter here in order to measure frequency. A nice tool to have too is going to be this drill. This drill is going to get us a specific speed out of that motor in order to measure frequency. Then the next thing, the important thing that you're going to need is a motor that you know the pull count on. This is going to be our beast of a motor. We're going to use the TP Power brushless motor for this video here. We know the pull count of this motor. It is a four pole brushless motor and we're going to use this as our baseline. This is very key in order to determine the pull count on a motor that has an unknown amount of poles. And lastly, we're going to take a look at a brushless motor that has more or less of a high pull count and just see if this works on this motor as well. Once we connect all these components and we run a simple test to determine the pull count, then we're going to take that information and we're going to drop it on the radiocontrolinfo.com website in order to determine the actual RPM that our drill is spinning our brushless motor up to. Once we have all all the information from our run-up of these brushless motors, we'll take that information to the radiocontrolinfo.com website, we'll enter it into a form on that website and compute the value which will help us determine how many poles. We'll see that very shortly once we run up and spin up each one of these brushless motors. Let's get started and spin up that TP power motor. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our multimeter and we're going to connect that up to our brushless motor. So I'm going to take one of these leads here from the multimeter. I'm going to connect it directly to one of the leads on the brushless motor. So now that we have that first connection, I'm going to take the remaining connection here from our multimeter and I'm going to place it on another lead of our brushless motor. Now that we have those multimeter connections complete, I'm going to take the motor and I'm going to attach it now to the drill. So I'm going to take the drill and I just want to place that chuck right on there so that I can clamp down and attach it firmly. From here, all I need to do is select the correct setting on our multimeter. You have to have a multimeter that is capable of measuring frequency. We're going to dial in the frequency setting on our multimeter. So there we have it. And now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to spin that motor up to full power and make sure that we're getting a consistent reading from our multimeter. And we can read that and that's going to be helpful for us later. Let's spin that motor up and take our first reading. So there we go, we have our first value in order to determine the actual pull count on our unknown motor. We can now disconnect this motor and place our second motor up the same way that we just installed the first one. We're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to connect our positive lead from the multimeter. We connect it to this red lead. It does not matter what leads you're actually connecting as long as you know that they're not going to short out on you. So I'm going to move the yellow wire out of the way and I'm going to attach the negative from the multimeter to the blue. Again, order here does not matter. We just want to make sure that nothing shorts out. If it does short out, what you'll notice is that the drill is going to have a more difficult time spinning the motor because it's going to act as a brake. And we talk about that in another video, how a brushless motor actually brakes and brings your radio control car to a stop. So let's go now and get the chuck down to a more reasonable size here. It looks like it's a five millimeter shaft. It's very common in these brushless motors. And now we can clamp down and spin our motor up. Thank you. 
Okay, we have now the reading from this motor. We're gonna go and connect our final motor up to our system and see what the reading is for that. And let's spin the motor up. Okay, now we have the readings from all of our motors. The only thing left to do is take those readings over to our radiocontrolinfo.com website, plug those values in, and we're gonna determine what kind of pull count that these motors all have. We head over to the radiocontrolinfo.com website. From here, we wanna go and hover over information, brushless motor efficiencies and constants, and we're looking for the measuring motor RPM unpowered. So we're not actually powering the motor up electrically, it's being powered up mechanically. So we want to go to the very bottom form here where it's determining brushless motor RPM. And this is where we want to enter the three values that we have used. We're gonna do this one at a time. The first value that we measure is 42.43. We'll enter that in terms of the frequency and we know that that TP power brushless motor is a four pole motor. From here, all we need to do is hit that calculate button and we get a value of 1273. So the 1273 in our case here, it's about 1275 that we need to remember. This is the value that we need to keep in mind, 1275. We're gonna keep this in mind for going through all the rest of our motors, which are two remaining. So then let's move on to the next motor. We had a 64.4 as the value of frequency. We place the 64.4 into our calculator and we'll stick to four poles and see if we get a number within about a percent and a half to 2% maximum. So we hit that calculate button and we get 1932. This is way over that 1275 that we're looking for. So we try a different value here. We put a motor pull count of two and we get an even bigger number. So we went the wrong way. We need to go in the opposite direction. We started at four, we went to two. Now we'll go and type in six. So it's guess and check. We get 1288. This is definitely within about a percent and a half. We are okay. This blue unknown motor is actually a six pole brushless motor for us here. And the last one that we're gonna check was our brushless outrunner. We're gonna start off by placing the 149.1 that that we measured as a frequency and we're gonna start, let's start at six poles. We know and expect that it is probably higher than six poles. We hit that calculate button and we get an RPM of 2982. This is not correct. We'll move up to the next set of poles and we're always doing this in terms of two poles at a time. We're never using an odd count. It's always two, four, six, eight and so forth. It's not eight, we move up to 10 and we get and we get an RPM of 1789, it's not correct yet. We go up to 12 and hit the calculate button. We're at 1491, still not within about a percent and a half or so. We move up to 14, we're looking for 1275 and we get 1278. We know that this motor is a 14 pole brushless motor and that's how easy it is to determine the pole count of a brushless motor. Well guys, there you have it. Now we know the exact count of poles that each one of these motors have and we were able to do that with a few simple tools being a brushless motor that we know the pole count to, a simple drill that we probably all have at home as well as a multi multimeter here that helps us determine the frequency count. Those simple tools in the radiocontrolinfo.com website and we can determine the pull count for any brushless motor. I hope you were able to learn something. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. One final comment for those of you who are still watching. If you are still watching, thank you for sticking right to the end of this video. The update that I want to give to you is the limitless brushless build that we started many months ago is finally done. Now there are a couple things that I'm a little bit unsure of and I'm going to go through that when we talk about that build in a next video.